everybody, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This video I'm going to get into working with curl and show you how to use it. I'm going to walk through a basic example of curl just so you can see how it's set up and the syntax and so forth. And then we're going to go through how to actually post data with curl, which is something that you probably want to do at some point. Now this came up because this is actually one of the tutorials. I'm just finished up recording module two for my PHP 101 course. And curl is one of the things that I go through. Now I go through a few more things regarding curl in that course, but I wanted to to put this one out there for people because I know that a lot of you probably would want to know how to do this. All right, so uh, again, I'm gonna just walk through a basic example and then I'll show you how to post data. So if you look over here on the right side, I have this page here. I'll go ahead and just refresh this so you can see this come up. This is Google dot com that's actually showing up in here now so the images are broken and links probably don't work and so forth because of the way that we're pulling it in but you'll notice right here this is the url that we're actually querying or we're sending the request to via curl so one thing to that's the first thing to really note about curl is that when you send a request to curl or to a, a url you query url it's going to give you the full output back from that. So depending on you know, what it is you're trying to do, a, a lot of times this could be some, you know, some script or some API or something like that that returns output and say maybe JSON form or whatever. So oftentimes that's how you're going to use this. In this case, I just put in Google, but just know that when you use this, you're going to get the whole output back. All right, so to do this, then there's a series of steps that you need to walk through. And I'm going to go through these kind of methodically because once you get this and see kind of the, the standard steps that you're always going to kind of go through, it'll make it easier for you to read other curl code. So if you've someone who's looked at curl code before and it just seemed kind of confusing and overwhelming, I know the first time I looked at curl code, I was like, okay, what <laughs> what's this mess here? because oftentimes it's not parsed out like that. It's all just kind of crunched together and it's kind of hard to figure out what's what. So I'm gonna go through and show you methodically what's each thing and you'll be able to then decipher other curl code that you see. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to initialize curl. So this basically just fires it up and we call the function curl init and we set a variable, variable in this case ch for curl handle. This is the handle that we're gonna then use throughout the rest of our query here. Now, this could of course be anything. Most often you'll see it be ch for curl handle. You could actually initialize multiple curl handles and query multiple URLs uh, in your code and so forth. So uh, again, it's arbitrary, but most of the time you're going to see ch here. All right, so once you have it initialized and fired up, then the second thing you're going to do is set options. So these options essentially define how we're going to query the particular URL that we're going to query and what URL we're going to uh, send our request to. So these all start, or you do this using the function curl underscore set opt. And again, then you just specify what options you wanna set and what the values for those are. So the first parameter is our, of course, curl handle that we're gonna pass in. The second parameter is the option that we want to set. And then the third parameter is the value that we're of that option. So you'll see this says curl opt underscore URL. So this is where we're going to set the URL that we want to send our request to. Now, if you go to the manual and just look up curl opt, you'll see down here that there's a whole list of different options that you can set for your curl request. So obviously I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can come here and you get what it is and it describes what it does and so forth. So if you're looking for something particular in terms of curl options, this is where you would want to go to, to find that. All right, so we're setting the URL. This is the URL we're going to send the request to. The second one, these are ones that you're probably going to see quite a bit. I mean, there's obviously these aren't always going to be like this, but I would say a good chunk of the time, this is how you're going to do your query. So that's why I'm covering these particular ones. So the next option we're going to set is what's called return transfer. So by default, curl, when it gets the, the output back from whatever request it made, it's just going to output it immediately. Now, 
oftentimes that's not going to be what you want. What you're going to want is actually capture to capture that output and maybe process it further inside of PHP. So a lot of times you're going to have to set this option curl opt return transfer to true. And what that's going to do is it's going to get the, the response from whatever URL you queried and it's going to store it in the variable that we use for our curl execute function down to here, which we get in a minute, so that you can then mess with it inside of PHP. So if you're querying some sort of API that returns JSON, for example, you'll get the JSON back stored as a variable that you can then decode and use in the rest of your application. All right, the next option then is the curl opt header. And this is whether to include the actual header from the request in the output. Now here I've set this to false. A lot of the times when I use this, I set it to false because I don't really need the header information. If you do need the header information, then by default it, it will return it. So you can just leave this option off. But this is another one that's kind of common that you would want to, you would definitely want to know, again, whether or not you want that header information. All right, from there, once you've set all of your options, then, then you need to just actually execute the request and then fetch the response. So curl exec, which obviously stands for execute, is how we're gonna do that. We're gonna pass in our curl handle after we set all of our options, and we're gonna set that equal to whatever variable we wanna store our output into. Again, because we've turned return transfer on, the response back from our request is gonna be stored in this output variable. Here we're doing a simple check to see if the request was successful. So if it's uh, identical to false, then we're just gonna echo out the curl error. Okay, so it's just a simple check to see if the request was successful. After that, we're gonna close up our curl handle. So maybe when we wanna do something later or whatever, we're just gonna close that down. And then here is where you would handle your output. Now in this particular case, I'm just displaying the raw output here. So that's why we just see the full page here. Again, if this were JSON code or maybe XML or something else, you would go ahead and process that however you prefer in the rest of your code. All right, so that's the simple example. Again, the steps to make sure that, that that's clear is initialize, set the options, execute the request, close and free up the curl handle, and then manipulate or display your output or the output from your request. All right, so that is the simple example or the basic example. Now let's go ahead and we'll take a look at one using uh, where we can post data. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment that so we can see it. Now, what you're gonna see is that this is really similar. The steps are actually the same. It's just a little bit different in terms of the options that we set. Now, we're making a request to a page called output.php. This is a page that I've created right here in my server and output.php is just gonna print out whatever's submitted to it. It's just gonna print out the post variable so that we can just see that that data was actually posted. So this is a lot like if you created a form and you set the method to post and you submitted the form and then you uh, on the, the, the page that that form was submitted to, you just did a print our post. It's, it, you're gonna get the same kind of output. So uh, there's nothing too much more complicated about it. If you're familiar with post, this is really very, very similar. You're just doing it without the form. All right, so again, we'll do the basic setup here. We've set the URL, like I said, to our output.php file that I created. We're creating our post data that we wanna actually post to the page that we're gonna submit this to. So this is a simple array that we've created here, query, uh, equals some stuff, method equals post, yah equals who. Just some stuff that's arbitrary so you can see there's nothing, you know, there's nothing built in about this. The The response that we get back from the server is gonna be what we send it via post. All right, so we have our basic setup. Then we start where we did before. We're gonna initialize curl with curl init. We're gonna set our options. So again, the first option is the URL that we're gonna send it to, which we set up here. Our second option is going to be this curl return transfer, curl op return transfer, because we want the information back instead of just immediately outputting it. The two things that are then going to be different is here we're doing a post request. So we're going to set 
this curl opt underscore post to true. That tells curl, hey, we're going to post data. Okay. And then curl's obviously going to want to know, well, what data? So that's what this next option is. And it's curl opt post field. So these are the fields that we're going to submit. And you can see we just passed in post data here. So we're passing in that array. And that's what we're going to send to this page. And so you see we execute the request and then fetch the response. So now we're back to where we were before. The rest of this is identical to before. We're calling curl exec, passing our channel handle, getting our output, checking to see if there's any errors, closing and freeing up the curl handle, and then we're displaying the raw output. And if we come back over here and refresh now that we've changed all this, you can see that the, the response, again, this is the printr of our output that we got back from output.php is our array that we submitted in our post data. So that shows you that curl actually submitted that data to output.php via the post method, got a response back, we captured that response, and we printed it out to the page. Okay, so that's a basic example, and that is example uh, allowing you to post data with curl. Hopefully that gives you a good start in getting into learning curl. Obviously, if you want to learn more, you can dive into my PHP course, PHP 101 at johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. Now, the biggest question I always get with these tutorials is where can you get access to the source code if you just want to get your hands on it and start working with it? I make all my source code available over on Patreon at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. You can get it there. You can get this. You can get all of the past source code that I've released, including the social network, the CMS, everything that I have is all over there on Patreon. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, I try to, to, to post a tech tutorial like this every Tuesday. And then I have a career advice type video that I try to post every Thursday. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, I try to do one of these every week along with another one on some career advice because my goal is to not only teach you how to code, but also how to turn that into a career that actually gives you the life and the lifestyle that you're after. So if you enjoyed this episode, I'd appreciate if you'd give it a like so that I know that you like this kind of content. If you know somebody who's wanting to know how to do this, then I'd appreciate if you'd share it with them. And if you're new and haven't yet, I want to encourage you to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the episodes. You get every new episode as it comes out. Also, if you want to take it further, I have a podcast available where I go much deeper into the more the career side of things. So if that's something that you're after, uh, then the podcast is definitely for you. You can subscribe to that podcast, listen to the past episodes at johnmorrisonline.com slash John Morris Show. That has all the details, all the past episodes, etc. So that's J-O-H-N-M-O-R-R-I-S-S-H-O-W. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, watching. We'll talk to you next time.